Hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. How are you today? So, today's lecture is about chapter 6, Analyzing Operating Entities. So, make sure you have a textbook with you right now. Okay, so now let's proceed to the slide. So, for better quality, make sure you use your headphones or... Will be the preview of this chapter. So I will break into two parts. First will be income measurement. The second part of this video will be revenue information. So as you can see on the first chapter, on the first part of this chapter is that I will cover on the concept of income. Next, I will continue with the measurement of income and the alternative income classification measures. Whereby the second part of this video about revenue position, I will cover on the guidelines for revenue operations and the analysis implications of the revenue Now, for the first part, let's go to page 339 of the textbook. It's about the explanation or the quick introduction to income revenue. Income is the net profit or money that remains after expenses are subtracted from the revenue. You can see in your statement of profit or loss right here where the income will be disclosed at the bottom line on your financial statement whereby revenues are the proceeds from the sale of products and services to customers as well as other activities like investment revenues will be disclosed at the top line on your financial statement now let's proceed to the concept of income that we can where I will share the definition about the economic income and the income. You can refer to page 340. To recap, there are two alternative concepts of income which are economic and permanent income. Now, how can we differentiate these two types of income? First of all, is economic income. Economic income will measure the net change in shareholders' wealth during a period. Relatively, it is equal to a period cash flows plus change in present value of expected future cash flows, which includes both recurring and non recurring components. Next, permanent income, also called sustainable earning power or sustainable or normalized earning. The estimates of several average income that a company is expected to earn over its life. This permanent income will reflect a long term focus and directly proportional. Okay, now let's continue with the next slide. So, uh, accounting for the income is based on accounting and is determined by recognizing the revenues and matching costs to the recognized revenue. Accounting income purports to measure neither economic income nor permanent income. So, in addition, the accounting income has a measurement error, which arise uh, because of accounting distortion, which are introduced by arbitrary rules, earnings management, and estimation error. So, because of these reasons, accounting income can be visualized as comprising of three components, which are the permanent or weekly component, the transitory component, and the value irrelevant component. So, as a first step, toward determining the permanent income, or the analyst must determine the core income, which is the current site or current periods for the income after removing or non recurring components. Now let's proceed with the accounting income in terms of administration. So there are two main components of accounting income, which are revenues or gains and expenses or losses. First of all, it's about revenues and gains. So revenues are recurring or earned inflows such as cash sales or the prospective inflows of cash such as bank sales. Whereby gains are earned inflows or prospective earned inflows of cash arising from the transactions and events that are unrelated to the company's ongoing business activities. Revenues are expected to persist independently for a going concern. However, in contrast, gains are non recurring This distinction is important for analysis, especially when determining the recurring component of the income. 
Now let's proceed to the expenses and losses. Expenses are incurred outflows, prospective outflows, or allocations of past outflows of cash that arise from a company's ongoing business operations, whereby losses are decreases in company's net assets which are arising from the non operating activities. The examples are losses on sale of investment securities and impairment of goodwill. Now, let's continue with this one in terms of alternative income classification in Malaysia. Proper income classification is important in analysis. Income can be classified along two major dimensions. First, in terms of a recurring against non recurring and second one, in terms of operating against non operating the operating versus non-operating classification depends primarily on the source of the revenue or an expense name, whether it arises from the ongoing operations of the company or from its charity transactions or financing activities, whereby the recurring versus non-recurring classification depends primarily on the behavior of the revenue or the expenses, whether it is expected to persist for its one-time event. Now I have already uh, identified in this table so that you can able to differentiate these two dimensions. First of all, in terms of recurring and non recurring income. The importance of classifying income components as recurring or non recurring arises from the need to determine the permanent and the transitory component of the income. Income in the recurring means that it is highly likely to continue in the future. It is predictable, stable and can be counted on in the future with a high degree of certainty, such as monthly interest income and monthly income received from customers for services provided. Whereby for non-recurring income, these are the gain of an infrequent or unique nature that is unlikely to occur again in the normal form of a business also called as extraordinary income. For example, gains from discounting operations, extraordinary items, or fire fee adjustments such as accounting changes. Now let's look at the operating income and non operating income. Many companies also report a measure of operating income. Operating income is a measure of company's income from its normal operating activity. Property income excludes all items that are either non recurring or unrelated to the company's primary business activity. Typically, property income excludes the following items from income from continuing operations, such as gain and losses from a company's preferred activities, impairment losses from a return down of operating assets, such as inventory, fixed asset, and goodwill, and three unusual or infrequent items, such as distribution charges. Or number four, other revenues or expenses such as interest income or interest expense and dividend income. So as you can see in this table, property income resulting from the firm's primary business operations, also called an EIP or a new report and tax, property profit or property. So property income will include interest expense, non recurring items, and items not directly related to your firm's for business operations, whereby for non operating income, these are gains or losses from sources not related to the typical activities of the business. It includes all components of net income and excluded from exporting income. Examples are dividend income, profit from investment, gains incurred in through foreign exchange, and asset price down. So as I mentioned before, there are two major income dimensions in terms of recurring and non recurring and operating and non operating. So this will be the summary of it. So how can you differentiate between recurring and non recurring? It depends on the behavior of the revenue or the expenses, whether it's expected to continue or it's a one-time event. Whereby in terms of operating and non operating, it is depend on the source of the revenue or expenses whether it's come from operating, investing, or maybe financing. Now, let's go to the four alternative income measure. You can refer to page 343. 
Income segments typically report three alternative income measures. Number one, net income. Two, compass income. And three, income from contributions. The first one is net income, which is typically regarded as the bottom line measures of income. In reality, it is not. Net income purports to represent the bottom line income measure that arises from transactions that occurred during the period. Net income, however, excludes unrealized gains and losses that arise because of changes in the value of assets and liabilities that are reflected on the balance sheet, such as increase in the value of non speculative investment securities held by the company. Whereby, compassive income reflects nearly all the changes to equity other than those from all activities such as dividends and share insurances. This implies that compensative income is the bottom line measure of income and it is the accountant's proxy for the company. Next, we have income upon continuity operation. It is a measure that excludes certain non recurring items such as extra revenue items, cumulative effect of accounting changes, and the effects of this continuity operation for net income. Sometimes this continuing income is directly referred to as operating income. For this reason, continuing income is often called income before extraordinary items or income from this continuing operation. So, as you can see in the statement of compensated income in the example here, you can see the position of the net income, the compensated income, and the income. Then we have number 4 which is called income. It is a measure that excludes all non-recurring and unusual items that are typically reported as separate line items in the income stack. So this will be the first part of this video about income. I will continue the rest of the content in income in the next video. See you again. Bye.